recent oldie, but I have been meaning to take on Rise of the Tomb Raider, the second of the reboot trilogy for quite some time, after enjoying and platinuming the first. Despite its dreaded multiplayer, thankfully it's nowhere to be seen in this edition, so Platinum Hunters you can rest easy. A huge undertaking for the game itself was the fact when this came out, it was under a lot of competition from Uncharted and other rivals, but the biggest obstacle was how could it improve and build on the first game, and be even better, and sadly, it couldn't. In its own right, this game is solid and enjoyable. The gameplay smooth and set pieces big, bold and fluid but there is a heavy burden that keeps it from being truly great. And that is the poor story, and the disconnect of what Laura stands for or should be. The characters are forgettably bland, and the story never gets going, despite the set big the flashy target. set pieces. You never feel for anything, and worse, it doesn't feel quite right, Lara, being a one-woman killing machine for what feels like the sake of it at times, rather than for pure survival and against the odds, like the first game. Thankfully, the gameplay and progression format drags the game through to the end. The pace in combat keeps things feeling fun, and the standard mechanics of climbing and zip wiring, for example, are all sturdy and not a hindrance, which gives the pleasure of hunting for the treasures and the tombs a pleasing flow when you aren't progressing the story on. It's an odd niggle to have when the actual hunting for collectibles and maps in the end game for 100% trophy became more fun than playing through the story itself, but the niggle was very present for me throughout my platinum hunt. The combat and gunplay is a positive in this game. Though it doesn't push any boundaries in the standard gameplay, it is fun nonetheless, if a little dated. And dated, as in the old cliche, wide open area to walk into, and you just know the enemies will be jumping out and a battle of shooting and using cover will ensue. It's not too bad an issue, but takes you out of the moment and you feel like you're playing the game rather than being taken by surprise and involved in your own personal narration of action. There isn't a lot of depth to the weaponry on offer. A pistol, shotgun, a rifle and a bow tick the usual gaming gun boxes, and that's all you really get, with some molotovs and types of grenades to use as well. As you progress you get different parts to make new variations of these guns, but they all feel very similar to the last weapon you have. Thankfully though, the headshots are done right, and Emmys goes down satisfyingly when hit, meaning the guns can be overlooked for the limited array when it's fun putting the enemies down with whatever you choose. Sadly, I have to add that I hated time attack mode. Something tacked on for the variety and wasn't a fan. It felt a lazy end game content with no real purpose apart from to tack on microtransactions for the cards that you needed to help boost your high scores. It's not great, and worse, it's needed for the platinum. A relief you can go onto leaderboards for levels and copy other players' cards for a small fee of points rather than actually purchase the cards needed, but it all just felt unnecessary and just a bit of a con. Another little annoyance is the trophy list. It isn't great for the hunters. They have thrown a lot of bronze into this list, and sadly quite a few aren't natural progression with the story. But it isn't hard, it's just a bit of a slog, and there's just so much individual little things to do, and some of it's rated for a bronze, where it felt a gold or a silver was much more needed for the satisfaction of earning that trophy. As you can see from the video, I have to add about the graphics. Even for today, it's strong. The debris and the animals, the horizons and the vistas all look good and sharp and goes hand in hand with the sound effects and explosions as everything feels present and the effort put in is very much acknowledged by the player. For me, this is a 3 out of 5. It's a game that survives on its gameplay merits, and that's all you can want from a game. Just I wanted more from the story, especially in this modern gaming age where stories are told in such great ways. So it left me feeling starved from what's on offer, which is a shame, because I really wanted to like this game more than I ended up doing so. A step backwards from the brilliant opening first game, sadly. But enough Platinum Hunters to enjoy, especially with no multiplayer grind best in sight. Just have to bear with the score attack as it's replacement. I hope you like my video, like and subscribe and give me feedback.